Hi and welcome to today's masterclass. We're gonna show you today not only how to bulletproof the back, the knees, but work the whole body. Uh, why are we gonna use the whole body? Because no system in the body works in isolation, therefore should never be treated as such. So even if you've got back pain, shoulder pain, you wanna apply these strategies to absolutely everything. And this is the way we program all our workouts. So really simply, most injuries are caused from an instability of a major joint, being an ankle, knee, hip, core, shoulder, wrist. Um, being the most common ones, poor posture, etc. Um, in my whole experience of, of running this concept, I've never seen someone injure themselves that you can't link it back to having an unstable joint. Okay, when you've got an unstable joint, it sends <laughs> problems all the way up to all the other joints in the body. So number one, the most important aspect of stabilizing is stabilizing your joints, and that's gonna give you the best bang for your buck on bulletproofing the body. It's the most important one. So we're gonna take you through that shortly. But also what we wanna do is make sure each major joint is not only strong and stable, through all functional movement patterns, we also wanna make sure it's mobile. It goes in all the ranges that it should because if it's tight, it's gonna create compensation elsewhere. So you wanna keep the, the joints strong and mobile, kind of that yin and yang. Um, and then from there, we also wanna keep all the muscles supporting all those joints, so just all the muscles of the body, loose, pliable, imbalance, et cetera, et cetera. So they're the main three, they're the bare basics, human movement 101. And then we, know, then we start to move some more advanced things. We're really working our neuromuscular connectivity, awareness, quality of contraction, your timing, your style, balance, coordination. All these factors are gonna be a big help. But you just master the basics with us, you're gonna eliminate 99% of problems. Um, there will always be the odd thing that is unpreventable, like if you're an athlete and a, a 300 pound athlete comes you know, flying into your leg, we're probably gonna have a strain or some sort of injury. So I mean, all we can do is all we can do and give ourselves the best opportunity to thrive and prevent injury. The other reason you really wanna worry about injuries is if you have a bad, even just a tendon sprain problem, your body, will, that joint will most likely never reach 100% again. So we wanna bulletproof the body and avoid injury, strains, tears, niggles at all costs, super crucial. But we're gonna start with the, with the foot and work our way back up, all the way up the body. First problem is we wear shoes, there's a lot of support, meaning we don't need to provide a lot of support for our ankles and we don't have the right muscles active. So you watch someone new to yoga, in bare feet, the foot will generally roll in. And this is just a generalization, but if that foot's rolling in because it's got no strength, it's never active, what happens to the knee? I'm putting pressure on this medial ligament, hips twisting, backs twisting, I've got problems the whole way up. Now, nearly everyone I speak to that runs and has knee problems have no stabilization of that joint. I just see that all the time. And if you get them doing a reverse lunge, this is exaggerated, it looks like that, okay? So every time they run, I say, I say to them, I go, that knee should hurt. It's got nothing stabilizing it. And that poor tendon takes the load all of the time. So some strategies that we're gonna to use to work our way up. Yoga is one of the best. We use a lot of different modalities, as I'm sure you know. But first off, even just things like our high lunge warrior, instead of just doing high lunge warrior and just sinking into it with nothing happening, we wanna be mindful, purposeful. See your foot in four points, where's the energy? Get it nice and level, start building the, the stability and the activation muscles of the feet to get nice and stable, bare basics. While we're there, we wanna do the same with the knee. So instead of just letting that knee sit here, which is how most people start all poses in yoga, we wanna lock it there and build awareness, neuromuscular connectivity of, how, of engaging and turning these muscles on. The good news about stabilization, what fires together will wire together, but the bad news is move it or lose it. That's how the nervous system works. So, when we, so we'll do all our high lunge warriors, every, all our warriors really, any single leg pose is gonna give us a lot of stabilization of those major joints. Meaning yoga is just gonna have to be a part of your daily practice if you wanna thrive for the next 70 years in my opinion. So then number one is being aware, and then when we start to do movement, even moving back into a high lunge, which is watch that wonkiness. So start practicing slow motion, engage, center your energy around the foot and around that knee, and as it wants to wonk, you contract harder. Build your style, but you'll build balance. You can just start to come up like this. So we'll do a lot of training around that for that reason, and as we get more advanced in our power hour, we're doing that with a lot of weight and a lot of different tempo. The style of weight training we're gonna to do to fix these joints is gonna be a lot of single leg work, very slow, changing that tempo, and often doing an isometric contraction. So one of my favorite exercises to bulletproof people's knees, ankles, joints, core, is a single leg squat. Build up to it, weights here, down slow for four, hold it about 90 degrees for four, and fire back up. The time under tension you're building around your stabilizers is enormous. Also, 
A lot of us hide all our instabilities. We can squat 250 pounds, but we can't stabilize our knee when we run because we can hide all our instability. Single leg, there's no hiding. I have a philosophy. We are a single-legged animal. The only two-legged animal that moves two-legged is from where, where I'm from, a kangaroo. So for everyone else, the fundamental of our leg training should be single leg. I move single leg at all times. Even when I'm standing, it's normally on one leg. If I'm surfing, which appears to be a two-legged sport, it's all pivoting. It's, it's generally back, back foot driven. So even for athletes, I mean, especially athletes, we want to get stable through those as well. The other thing I train very heavily is getting you strong on your tiptoes. Why? Let's look at a dancer who lands in a plyometric, gets spun in the air and lands perfectly. It's a dancer. What do dancers do? They train high on those toes, build that calf strength. And when you mix a lot of tiptoe work, which we do from everywhere from our yoga to our weightlifting, to our plyometrics, to our hip, we're always getting them on the toes. So we're light versus thud. Thud. Flat-footed means high impact, high impact, high impact. Light, and especially when you're aware of where the weight goes, will start to move effortless. So when you're exhausted in hit, it's the muscle exhausting, not the joint. Very, very important. And that's one of the big things I want you to think about through all movement. It's either your joints predominantly loaded or the muscle. Even I watch guys doing push-ups little tendon bounces. It's normally the tendon loaded. There's no chest activation. So we change up the style there and our lifting patterns, which we'll talk about later. So let's moving up the body. That's the bare basics. Also doing a lot of tip top work, tip toe work down in our hovering squat is going to build us that strength and stability around the knees to stay light. Okay. So we're going to do a lot of work, tip toe, single leg, lunging with weight, without weight, yoga, is there still a time for double leg work? Of course, but it should not be the fundamental of your practice if you want to move well on land. And on this topic of moving well on land, if you want to move well on land, you need to train on land. Okay, I see so many people, you know, reformers, um, uh, rowing machines, spin, all these things, they're great tools and they can get us um, off some impact if you've got an injury. But if you want to thrive on land, we need to make you light and strong on land. You're not going to build the right new, um, stabilizers on a bike and come back to land or on a reformer. So I much prefer things like mat Pilates instead of reformer Pilates. Get on land, get light on land, control your body, take the weight out of your movement. It's gonna change the way you float around. You'll walk lighter, everything will be lighter, straight, no instabilities. <laughs> then we look at the, the midsection, everything from our hip flexor to our lower back. The biggest problem, 90, I think the latest research is about 95% of back pain is all linked to the over arch okay the problem with the overarch, and this is how people walk sit um, is basically the spine is loaded and the core is off a lot of people have back pain costing Australians and Americans more money than cancer and disease they think they've got a lower back problem and weak lower back you probably do however the bigger problem is this can't engage right now linked like this I'm exaggerating I can't contract my abs hard here at all it's a very light contraction when we straighten the spine, tuck the tailbone, Pilates 101, which is why Pilates should be the, another fundamental part of your practice for the rest of your life, it tuck that tailbone, it straightens our spine. And now we can get that straight line from a heel up into the head. And that's why we do a lot of leg up work when doing weights, because instead of pressing and loading the spine as it gets heavier, which most people do, we contract the core, straight line, build the hip flexor strength, which are very tight and weak from oversitting. We strengthen that. And now we bring our core back in this way. And look at that, that core fires. Like that's like 100% contraction. This, I'm contracting at 10%. So now we build this war chest from the front. We build the hip flexors, everything. And we retrain the body not to just see the core as these six little, little muscles. They're one of the more useless or less effective. When we're going to stabilize the core, it's everywhere. It's the inner thighs hip flexors, TBA if you're into Pilates, oblique, serratus, the whole nine yards. We want everything to engage to protect that straight spine. I kind of jokingly say to people, think about a pillar, okay? Is a pillar in a building soft or hard, okay? It's always hard, obviously. So how do you want your spine to be? <sighs> always contracted, strong in nearly all movement. Even elite athletes today, soccer, that's contracted. Whenever they're doing their twisting, turning, it's contracted, it's on, it's straight, it's hard. The other thing I ask, is a pillar normally built nice and straight or does it have twists and curves? Too many twists and curves create weak points. So your core, when you're doing everything from bench press to shoulder press, um, even, even these days, what the more advanced athlete trainers are doing, even in a chin-up, you want the neutral spine. 
tuck the tailbone, fix the whole core, neutralize this whole region, activate here, take the pressure off the back, and so on. Couple of exercises to try at home. The first problem everyone has is their plank. I nearly learned all people's problem points just in watching them do a plank. Most people's plank, they sink onto their shoulders, no activation, sink into their lower back and sink into the wrist. They've got sore wrists, sore shoulders, sore spine. We need to re reverse that so that your bra line, if you're wearing one, guys, where that would be, is the highest point. This is gonna help build all your hand strength, wrist strength, support the shoulder joint, and again, we're tucking that tailbone and building the anterior and protecting the core. So we're tilting that pelvis. If a lot of people are disconnected to their pelvic tilt, so you may even just practice tuck or tuck, tilt, tuck, tilt. And imagine that pelvis is just going like that. Some people call it the Michael Jackson. So working up, get your plank right, get that active. Um, I, would, I plank and do that on the side body as well to stabilize this whole shoulder joint and create space, lightness, so that whole joint is active. The amount of even elite athletes I train that can't hold a side plank for 30 seconds and it's all wobbly, it's back of the shoulder, is very, very alarming. High risk for shoulder injury. So we can bulletproof the core, joints, shoulders, just by some, with, with some really smart or very simple training techniques. And then basically, I mean, we're not gonna show you all the different mobility exercises we do, but there is a time and a place for the boring mobility exercises. You know, sitting in tabletop, shoulder rotations. Get that joint moving, get the synovial fluid to the joints. What you can work your hips standing, sitting, especially if you're always in compression. But what you wanna think about is yin and yang. Most people that are training, they overtrain the yang. Too much compression, too much impact tension resistance. We need to balance that with decompression, release the yin. Okay, and obviously we want to loosen up the whole body, which is why we program yin yoga in our schedule because you're getting a four or five minute release of just one muscle. So everything we do here at Flow is built on stabilization of joints, mobilization of joints, and flexibility muscles. Beyond that, we're using things like animal movement. Why? Because they help, I mean, yoga and Pilates is great. I've talked about all their wonders, but they're very perfect. Yoga is normally in straight lines or train tracks. Pilates is very perfect. Life is not like that. You want to climb a mountain, you want to go play soccer, swim, surf, do anything of physical activity, even pulling in the groceries, you're twisting and turning. And the beauty of animal movement in something like a duck walk is we're in a mo basically a mobility position. We're walking, twisting, turning, getting those joints used, tendons used to twisting and turning, making, improving their elasticity and improving the way we function. Also some other great things about animal flow, things like the lateral monkey, we're learning to take our weight and impact out of the body to lower the impact of the landing. So instead of being very heavy on the wrist and heavy in everything we do, we go a little bit lighter. We change the way we connect with land, not just with our feet like we talked about with the dancer, but through our wrist, shoulder. Everything should be light, away from the ground, create space, build that strength, and that's really the basics of our formula. And that's really the basics of not just our flowability class, but even our power hour, we bring in weights. As I said, with the single leg work, we're slowing it down. When I slow down my shoulder press on an eccentric, I'm recruiting protection of that shoulder the whole way around. Okay, when I'm bench pressing and not doing full range and bouncing on the tendon, I slow it down, I activate the posterior to protect the joint, I get bigger bang for the buck because I'm activating both. Anyway, I may stop here for a little contraction, the chest is on, and then push versus chest off, tendon loaded. So we want to transform everything you think you know about lifting because most people overload the joint, underload the muscle, they're tight, posture's wrong, problems head to toe, and they're all very, very easily fixed. So that's our masterclass today easy to do, very, very basic. Um, it's kind of just the fundamentals of, of human movement, um, but no one's doing them. And that's, the, the formula is very, very simple.